computer. <laughs> Here we go. Welcome back. Episode 37, Process Preparation and Performance. I'm Duke Key Simmons. At JR, we got a cool guest here tonight. Coach Z of the North Point Grizzlies is in the house. First year program. He is leading them. He's doing some amazing things. But JR, we got something special coming up in about three weeks time. I'm getting a lot of texts. I'm getting a lot of calls. I'm getting a lot of uh, social media messages. February 5th. Tell people what's happening, my man. Yeah, February 5th, we've got our third clinic. Uh, had to take a year off with COVID situation, but uh, getting back at it this year again. So February 5th uh, in Jeff City, Missouri, be happy to have anybody and everybody show up. Got a great list of speakers. Uh, you check our Twitter account for a list of that, our website, breakdownsports.com. And we're just super excited to have everybody back and, and see some old friends. Oh, I agree. You see some old friends is right. We, you know, I just got a phone call the other day from our wild card guest out of Haddonfield, New Jersey. <laughs> Coach Frank Delano and uh, Jared it was totally great. I had sent him a text and I said, Hey, Frank, how you doing? And um, he goes, Pretty good. And I said, How'd the season end up? And, because he texted us, you know, and he told us that they were, you know, just lost two games or whatever. And Frank goes on to say, We won the state title, coach. Came back and wins the state title in New Jersey. And that crazy man is thinking about driving here or flying here just so he could come. <laughs> come to the clinic. It's totally incredible that February 5th here in JC Mo, our third in-person clinic, that's right, in-person, uh, the response has been extraordinary. You get some free lunch out of it. It's 40 bucks a coach, unless you bring five or more, then it's 30 bucks. This is not a moneymaker. We're just trying to pay for the venue, get together and talk some ball. But without further ado, we have Coach Zangrillis. I think I got it right, from North Point High School, the Grizzlies, brand new high school, JR, in Wentzville, one of the fastest, if not the fastest growing school district in the state of Missouri. I drove by the school before the construction was done. Beautiful campus. But Coach Z, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Jer, I'm going to get started because I got a ton of questions for Coach Z, and I don't want to I don't want to waste any time if you're okay with that. First and foremost, the first guy at a school, not a small school, you're, you're in, you're in Wentzville, Missouri, Holt just plays for a state title. You've got big brothers all around you. How did it feel when the AD, the principal, whoever it was, gave you the call and said, you are the guy that is going to create our football program? It was a dream come true. I mean, it really was. It was, uh, got a call. And, you know, I've been sweating it over the, uh, since the interview and uh, it was, it was a dream come true. I'll never forget that moment when I got that call. Cause this is, um, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and it's something that, you know, I cherish and I, every day I try to, you know, make the best impact I can on our athletes and our community and our culture. It's just, it's a very special opportunity and something, you know, uh, living the dream, you know. That's great. That's awesome. Tell us about your, your playing history, your coaching history, whatever it was, how you got to wear uh, the blue and orange there. Absolutely. Well, the blue and orange is easy for me. I, I was a Gators fan growing up, following Tim Tebow, so the, the blue and orange was an easy. It was an easy tell. Um, but I grew up. I went to uh, Fort Dumont North High School. Uh, played under Coach Joe Bacon, and uh, I was fortunate to be there when he was as a player for his first couple years as a coach, and. Um, Ended up going to Missouri State and was in the walk-on process there. And then I uh, came back to Lindenwood and played there for a season during, and I redshirted during that time. And I, I got into coaching, came back to Zubalt North and just fell in love with the coaching aspect and the teaching of a player and having them go from learning a concept, applying that concept and being successful on the field and then taking it into life and teaching life lessons and really helped molding these young men. It's just, it was something I knew was special and that was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and uh, so got right into coaching coach four years under coach Bacon at Zumwalt North at my alma mater absolutely loved it um, accepted a teaching position and coaching position now in Jackson Missouri had known of Jackson knew of their success and uh, coach Ackley and um, was offered a teaching position and accepted and it was 
it was a phenomenal year. Uh, Coach Exley is, you know, they, they won state last year. Uh, it's a highly successful program, amazing community. And um, it really enjoyed my year down there. And then came back up to Zumalt East and coach under Coach Ekrit. And he opened up Zumalt East and then spent a year there and took a teaching position in the Winslow School District and taught under uh it taught at frontier middle in the Winslow school district and coach under Mc, coach mcmillan so i was fortunate enough to be under two head coaches at an open program so um I, i've been blessed to coach under and learn under uh so many fantastic head coaches and it, uh, just all that experience has really helped me to get to where i am and just so many great mentors that have I've been able to bounce ideas off of and take ideas from and just run with them. And it's just been, it's been an amazing journey. And I, like I said, I'm living the dream. This is, this is an amazing opportunity. Yeah, that that's pretty awesome, man. Just to hear about that and hear and see your passion when you're talking about it. I think it's going to come across perfectly why you're helping to lead, uh, that program from start to finish. So you get there, you get the job, yet you have nothing, right? I mean, there's no, there's no helmets, there's no shoulder pads, there's no bags, there's, there's not even a football lying around, is there? How was that process? How was that just like, okay, I have a good idea of some things we're going to do in practice and those things, but first I got to go, I got to I got to go create all this stuff. How was that? So what another element that made it interesting is I had never met any of the players. So having, you know, in Winsville, that that was an easier transition, but still I I had never met any of the players. And I've met a few of them as, you know, once I had accepted the position, but um, it it was definitely a unique opportunity. And like you said, not having footballs, waiting on equipment, um, you know, with COVID that kind of slowed some shipping down and um, you know, we just kept, kept plugging along, moving forward. We actually started with our all school strength and speed uh, at Holt. So that was a, during the month of June. So we actually had to spend that first month at Holt and they were great hosts and we were able to um, run with it, run, do some camp work, do some football training. Like it was, it was definitely a different experience opening up a school and not having your own place, but uh, it, it was great. We, our coaching staff was resilient we you know we we never took anything with you know why do we have to do this it was take it head on you know head on and we just ran with it it was just it, we could not have opened up better you know the, and the all school strength and speed definitely something i want to expand on we we had about 100 student athletes come up three days a week and we trained you know and again this is any athlete we did different groups as far as you know we had a um we had soccer players, swimmers, cheerleaders, dancers, football players, basketball players, you name, any North Point Grizzly came up and we put them through four different stations of the weight room, our auxiliaries, some speed training and our agilities. And it was, and that's how we spent our first month and really just hit the ground running. So we, we took off with it. Great stuff. Great stuff. JR, what you got? Yeah, I've got, this is a, this is interesting, uh, driving home from the, in the middle of nowhere. So trying to do this, but, uh, coach, I got a question for you. There was, we had a couple podcasts guests on over the, over the couple of years we've done this. And one of them mentioned the fact that when you come out with a job description, say for a new school, for a head football coach, you really need to know what exactly the job is versus what it really is not. And I'm curious from your standpoint, uh, just as your first year going into it, you knew obviously part of the job was going to be to coach the football team. But what part of the job ex- kind of surprised you that it really was that you weren't expecting? And maybe what's a part that surprised you that it really wasn't? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, there's it, I, I guess the biggest part, you know, just from the surface level, just like you said, you know, you're people may think you're coaching just the varsity team and, and you are, but and you have that high school program, but there's so many different levels to it. There's, you know, you have your junior Grizzlies, you might be coaching other sports. So there is, there's many hats that um, a head football coach plays, you know, puts on that um, aren't on that surface level. And it's, again, it's just that spread of that impact that you can make and just have such a positive impact on future North Point Grizzlies from, 
I, I've made trips to the middle school to elementary schools and really um, touch base and help try to get more connections to the North Point Grizzlies. And it's, uh, it's again, putting on those all different, all different types of hats has been uh, definitely something that is not right on that surface level as far as uh, what you would see, you know, more people might think as far as being a head football coach. Um, what was the second part of your question? I'm sorry. You know, the second part would be what, what is something that maybe you thought would be a big part of the job that actually the job didn't have anything to do with it, kind of what the job was not? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say it's, it's interesting to see just, again, you know, from the day, game day setup, like there's just so many different thing, events that go on throughout the course of, of a football season. Um, the day-to-day, like it's – it's just it's such a great experience and a lot of people might think that you know that it's just calling football plays but again it, there's there's just so many different levels to it and it's it's the the deeper levels and making connections with student athletes and communities and their, their families and really just um getting to know all of our student athletes on a very um you know, high level is just something you can make a great impact. And, you know, we talk about having our players come back to our community and being on the sidelines and just wanting them to make that, that family, that uh, family feel uh, at North Point. When you guys first got started, you know, I don't know how the, the Wentzville school district split down there. I know you have Holt down there. You've got Timberland. Uh, how are you guys able to create like some instant school pride or, like you just mentioned, the, the instant kind of family atmosphere that, that people want to come back to and, and you're going to have alumni, obviously, for years to come. But what were some of the challenges with that? Or was it just something that instantaneously the kids were just like, yeah, this is us and here we go? Yeah, I, that's that's a great question, too. We uh, the, the the family feel started over with that all school strength and speed program that we built. And, uh, you know, we talk about doing things the grizzly way and our students did such a great job of uh, not coming in with, you know, well, this is how I've always done it or anything like that. They were just they, they're bought in and our, our buy in just from the top down. Our admin team is phenomenal about talking how we're, we we want to do things the grizzly way. And um really try things and, you know, learn. And if you mess up, you make a mistake, you grow from it. And just, we, we want to be the best in everything that we do. And that's that, that family feel it really came from that all the, the summer and just the growing one really awesome event we had was we had um, our army national guard came and they put our, uh, our student athletes through a workout over the summer. And it was really cool just to see them struggle in a workout and then look over and see 30 other people doing the same thing and struggling that same sense. And that was, again, that school wide feel. So it wasn't just like, well, I'm just a football player. I'm just a wrestler or basketball. It was the school and it was everybody struggling together. And we had coaches that were participating. And when they start feeling that coaches are there for them. And, and we just, we talk about, we don't teach through fear. We teach through love. And we want our student athletes to feel that, you know, we're there for them, that we care about them, and we want to see them succeed. And it's not about my success, you know, individuals. It's about our team and our family success. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, JR, I'm going to answer part of your question, too, because uh, we have a friend, JR and I do, who we used to coach with, who lives in Wentzell. So I was actually, when the, the school was announced, I was kind of just following, because I'm kind of weird like that. I like to follow high school football and see what's going on. I was actually following some of the development of the school and watching it build and, and seeing how all the time on Twitter, they were posting Jr. like welcome to the Grizzly nation or Grizzly family. And they're handing out shirts and, and yeah. doing all this stuff. So it, it was pretty interesting uh, to watch them develop that and to watch them put people in a spot, not because they were just trying to fill a spot, but it was actually like somebody wanted to be in that spot. Right. So Coach Z, you mentioned it, and I talked to talk to my own family, and I talk to the kids I coach all the time. When you get kids that understand that there's a difference between the saying, I have to do this, and I get to do this, the growth potential is incredible. If we could teach some adults in life, too, and sometimes that's teachers, sometimes that's the person who's helping us at a store some or fixing our car or just in general, anywhere in life. I'm not picking on those people in particular, but 
looking at things from not a, well, I have to do this and I get to do it. That that's what really sets teams apart. So here you are first year JV schedule, right? We JV did have schedule. one. Okay. Who'd you play? Played Afton. Afton. I, you know what? I saw that. I did see that. So you had a varsity game against Afton. Tell us a couple things, coach. One, how many kids did you get on the roster? Nine through 12. And tell us what that first varsity game is like when you're there and you see just a bunch of your colors running around. So we had in our program um, about 60, 60 players. And so that was a, we split them and had a kind of our freshman seats. Baby. So it was kind of a unique split for this first season. Um, but that, that first game, well, I'll be honest, really started, we had a blue and orange scrimmage in early August. And it was just our scrimmages to see, you know, get guys reps, get some live reps against uh, each other. And at one point we looked in the stands and, we just, I, you just had to press pause and it was just so amazing to see how much, I mean, our scenes were packed and this was for a blue and orange scrimmage. And, you know, we talk about community. We want to be great in the community classroom and on the field and our community is just phenomenal. We, we, you know, we asked people to donate Gatorade for our blue and orange scrimmage. And uh, someone was like, oh, Winslow sold out of Gatorade. And like, it, it just speaks to how great our community is as far as just supporting and being behind our um, our young men, uh, but to that varsity game, that was that was special. Um, that, you, you know, you come out, you our boys, we we prepped them on everything, trying to prepare and having. We started at, on that varsity, and we started about uh, seven freshmen on both sides of the football, and I, I I can't tell you how proud I am of them. They are they were resilient. You know, we they they took some lumps in the first. You know half or so we kind of got down a little bit but then we battled back and it, it was it was really impressive and really spoke to how mature and the potential of these young men um in that moment but that was it it, it was a very special moment it's a game I'll never forget um and I, again our boys and our staff just the preparation all the hard work that they had you know and we we talk we compare you know, a lot of things that we do to, you know, what Nick Saban does. And I feel like that's a pretty good program to kind of um, at Alabama to model. And we treat every game like it's the same. You know, we didn't do anything special for the varsity game. We we knew it was a different level, but we, you know, we scouted. We did we did all the things that we normally would do. But the boys were so just positive. And, and, and again, that we, we got down, but they, they battled back. And that was probably the most impressive part and to show that resiliency from such a young uh, core. And it really gives us a lot to look forward to in the future. You know, you alluded to it uh, earlier on that when you first took over, there, there was nothing there. There was no football, there's no equipment, anything. I think maybe some of our listeners. Uh, and me in particular as well. How did you go about assembling your staff? What was uh, what was some of the things you used to try to put the pieces in place to where these are some guys? Hopefully, they'll stay with you for the next three to five years and provide that continuity for the kids. A absolutely. Uh, one of the first steps was getting you know people on our staff that, in the biggest kind of look that I was looking for is how do you, you know, that, that want to be a, make a difference in our student athletes and want to, um, again, that long-term commitment, that positive role model is, um, something that I, I was really looking forward to in the staff. And again, I, I, we, we didn't know every single person that we, we were bringing on our staff from, you know, just, just word of mouth and, you know, recommendations, but we hit home runs across the board. And I, I really can't speak, you know, I can't, can't say enough great things about our staff. They um, all coming back next year. We, we've got just that continuity already. Um, the eight of us already are staying together and it's, they work tirelessly. They, they love being there. I mean, it, it was just, it, it was a great experience building them because it, we had to pull from so many different places. We had a coach come from Sykes in Montgomery County, a couple from, Winslow that I'd coached with previously and 
again, like, like you said, you, you building that staff is a very unique feel. And the first thing, the biggest thing I look for is just wanting to make a positive impact on, on our student athletes. And, um, just again, that wanting to be there, like they want to be there. They want to be around our student athletes and make that positive impact. And, um, you, you can, our, our boys sense that they can sense, you know, they even had like, man, you guys, you guys love this. I'm like, yeah, that's what we tell you. Like, we, again, we don't coach through fear. We coach through love. It's because we love you guys and we want to make that difference in your life and have that positive impact. Yeah, that's awesome, coach. I am going to quote somebody that JR pays attention to a lot. His name is Fergus Conley. And JR sent me this text the other day. Uh, I'm going to read it. It's directly from him. I can't take credit for it. One of the biggest mistakes in team sports, all coaching is not the same. Position coaching is coaching. Coordinate coaching is managing. Head coaching is facilitating. You, Coach D, got to do all three in a short period of time with kids you didn't meet, coaches you didn't meet, and it's a, it's a testament to the people who hired you, right? I mean, you're, you're rolling on, you got the whole coaching staff coming back. There's places across the state that can't say that. Um, you're doing good things. I can see the energy in your eyes when you speak. It's great. So you had one varsity game, narrow margin defeat, right? That's pretty good. Was it 40 to 32 or something like that? Um, so very close. Right. You had a bunch of other games that you rolled through your you've you've got schools in your backyard that are helping you. That's what football is all about. So football season's over. You got to put all that new stuff away. You got to send helmets back to get reconditioned. But now you got to do something that they've never done before either. And that's an off season program. So you got to start to you have to start to build that mindset of what is the standard. So tell us what's happening at North Point right now. Uh, and that's a great, great question too. They are, uh, our standards set pretty high and we, we set that high intentionally. And so we have, um, I, I teach a weightlifting class at our school and uh, we're, we're growing those electives and we, we really highly recommend that our players take that during school. Um, but for this first year, we don't have a ton of those courses. So we have a lot of uh, players that come after school and we, we also push them to be multi-sport athletes so we have I mean almost I'd probably say 90 to 95 percent of our program is doing something whether they're uh playing basketball or wrestling so we we really want them to be multi-sport athletes but if they are um if they're not they're coming after school and when they come after school we have we're 15 to 20 deep every day and it's um we're teaching the fundamentals of our movements we're sprinting we're jumping we're doing all of our off-season training in the uh, the boys, the young men, they are just bought in. They love it. They, they're, they're getting that feel of hard work is paying off. You're seeing, I mean, we have kids who have doubled their squat maxes already in just month and a half, two months. And it's just because they're, they're committed, they're working. That's what we talk about is just consistency and that commitment is the key. Um, it, so that is something that we're really proud of. We've, we've had a couple lifters of the month and guys that, um, I mean, bench maxes have gone up 100 pounds over the last six months just from august and now it's our our young men are working and they're working hard and we, we're extremely proud of them so that that's where our off-season program is at right now um we actually have a signing day coming up at our middle school event so that'll be something that our incoming freshmen are going to take part in they're gonna um they're gonna sign a commitment letter uh which is a pretty cool event and take pictures with their future jersey and then we hit track season we again we really want a lot of our football players to be in the track program. And if not, they're playing baseball. They're, they're doing something that's involved in the school. Um, Cause that the more school involvement we have, the, we, we feel like that's they're setting up for more success, not just on the football field, but in life, like that school involvement's exactly what we want to see in our young men. So it, it, the five days a week, you know, I talked to another coach and like five days a week, like, yeah, we, we have, number five days a week are our, our, it's and that's a credit to the parents that are getting providing rides because again we have mainly freshmen and sophomores so a lot of those guys can't drive um right. so it's a credit to them it's a credit to the boys and our coaches that continue to be there every day and again that work i think that high standard is what we see and what we're thriving on you mentioned doing the kind of the signing day ceremony at the middle school the one thing I've always found interesting is at a new place, everything you do is a first. 
What, what was the most exciting first for you this year? Uh, the most exciting first that would that that first game, that first JV game that we had, uh, the first win. Uh, something again, like just we, like you said, we have so many firsts, and like there's so many things that I will personally never forget from the season. Such a season, but um, you know, the first time taking the field, the first time um, our boys. You know, we we kicked off and just it, everything, like you said, was a first. So that 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 first game um, in our program at the JV level was something that I'll never forget it again. And then you talk about the varsity game; that it, it's just a different level. And that's what our boys, you know, we had exit interviews with all of our players, and they they got that taste of what a Friday night really feels like because again, that was their only experience, and they're just like that. that that's what we want to be doing. And that's, that's, that's the goal. Get that atmosphere. And I said, that's what's amazing about that is you get that every Friday. Night. So, um, I know it's, I'm kind of cheated and get, give you two answers, there, but, uh, th those two are the, those right. two are the um, yeah. check out. you know, it's, I'm looking at your schedule for next year, coach, and it is, it's not easy. It, there is there's nothing easy about it, but if it was easy, everybody would do it. And, uh, you know, I have a great picture on my wall. It's of Jesus. It said, I never said it would be easy. I only said it would be worth it. And uh, it certainly sounds like you're making it worth it. Tell us what your summer schedule looks like so far. What are you guys doing? So we'll open up with our, uh, we'll do some football training the first couple of weeks. We uh, are playing right now and obviously with COVID it might, but um, is to go to an overnight team camp, participate in some seven on sevens in June. Um, and then kind of spend that, the middle part of our sandwich summer in just training and getting us better. And then we'll hit the ground and do some more uh, camps in the sun towards that back half of July. Um, but we, we really try to get us and spend that time getting us to where we need to get to. We'll do some, um, we'll do some team camps. Uh, there's a couple of coaches in the area. Um, one that I played with at Lindenwood, uh, Coach Radigan at France House Central that uh, we've talked about getting together and, um, you know, meeting up and scrimmaging. And uh, we have different opportunities like that, but that's kind of how our um, summer work between our four days a week of training and um, any football camps that we participate in. So but you're right. that, And that's that's what we're kind of gearing our guys up for is that, you know, our schedule, it, it's, it's a different level. And um, – but we, we are ready for that competition. We're ready for it. We're going to take that head on. Um, again, you could see it in our exit interviews and even at our banquet, we talked about how we're, we're going to be in the GAC Central, which um, to go from the, the schedule that we had this past year to the GAC Central, that's, that, that's definitely going to be a challenge. But we are um, – it's a challenge we look forward to. And we're very excited about it. So who's going to be the big rival? <laughs> Uh, what? It, that, that's a great question. You know, I think the Winslow kind of, you know, playing each other, that, that kind of, that natural rivalry takes care of itself. Um, so that, that's probably going to be, you know, we, we do play Holt and Liberty this first year. We don't play Timberland because they slid down to the GSD South. Um, so yeah. we will play them. So those, those two games that naturally are, you know, the ones that, are, are I would say probably the most natural rivals just because they're it's your Winsville, uh from the Winslow fan, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, Coach. It's been a it's been a great first year. We can tell it's it's awesome that you're here. I appreciate you answering the shout that I gave you on Twitter. Um, who would you like to give a shout out to? It, I, you probably told thank you to 150 people at your banquet, right? You probably had a book that you were keeping all year, just writing down, I got to say thank you to this person all the time. Take, take whatever you need, shout out, whatever you'd like to do right now, whether that's parents, admin, staff, players, uh, just anybody that want to be, it's your time, Coach. What would you like to say? Absolutely. Well, thank you for the floor. Uh, first, I, I'd like, uh, again, to th thank the admin for believing in me. Um, you know, I, I gave them all a helmet, you know, I just said thanks for believing me because that, that initial belief is, you know, just like you said, is, um, means, means everything to me, uh, to give me this opportunity and live out my dream, um, to our staff, our staff is top notch. We have amazing 
uh, men that w work and they love being there for our guys and making our guys better each and every day. Um, the parents in our community, I, like, like I said, that speaks to the blue and, <laughs> the blue and orange game where, you know, it, people were telling me that Gatorade was sold out in the Winslow area. This just, it speaks to how dedicated and how committed our parents are in our community and how uh, we just can't thank them enough. Um, our boys, our, our, our young men that are becoming men before our eyes, they're, they're growing um, it just in all areas of their life in academically, athletically, personally, it's, it's just, it's such an honor to be a part of, um, it's, it's special. And it, that's why you get into coaching is to see that growth and to see them become, go from young men as freshmen, immature 15 year olds to they leave as 18 year old graduates. And you're like, you know, that you made a difference in that, that young man. But, um, and then lastly is my family. They, they mean the absolute world to me. Um, they, they support me in everything that I do. My, my two daughters are, they're just, that, that is that coaching and then coming home to them. is just, I'm, I'm living, I'm living my best life, you know, with them. And, you know, my wife, my wife is just, she supports me in everything that I do as well. Uh, is I'm, like I said, I'm very blessed. I've got, um, a great support system, fantastic admin, fantastic coaches. I, I, I can't say enough about just the position I'm in, and I'm very blessed, very fortunate to be, be where I'm at. Thank you as well for this opportunity. This is uh, easy to talk how great, great North Point is. When, when yeah. you love, you know, when you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And this is, uh, I look forward to coming to work every day. That's awesome. Coach, we, we love the excitement. We love advancing the game through relationships, and it sounds like that's what you're doing. Sure, you know, JR and I like to throw the ball around the yard. We like to do that too, and uh, we like to tackle people and do all that kind of stuff, but it sounds like you're doing it the right way and setting a foundation that, you know, your AD, who was it, Jason Moore? Uh, uh, you're, I did, I'm sorry, I missed you. Jake Adams, I'm sorry. Jake sorry. Adams, yeah. Jake Adams. Yeah, and then, Jake Adams and then Shell Meyer, the principal and whatnot. I mean, how cool is that? Right. I mean, just watching you guys do all this stuff and, and go through it. And it, it's been, it's been incredible. Um, we wish you the very best. Now we're going to put you on the spot. We didn't, we didn't tell you about this, but Jer and I believe that the oldest game ever played was tag. Maybe the first game most people played was tag and you've been it for like the last half hour. So you're in a, you're playing tag with a bunch of coaches and you're about to tag somebody. And then that person has to be on the show. Now the, the catch is you got to know them. So you can't say, Oh, I'm tagging Nick Saban. You can't, you can't, you, you can't call Nick. Right. Um, but yeah. Right. But if you were, uh, if you were going to tag somebody, who would it be and why? Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, there's two I'm gonna go with coach Radigan coach Radigan at uh Francis Hall Central he's uh another uh young coach I believe it's his second year in the program as well uh, at Francis Hall Central and he's he's doing great things over there as well so uh, he's it I I I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> nice nice JR you got anything Yes, yeah, Coach, thanks for coming on. And, you know, I want to give it a shout-out to our uh, girls' basketball team, actually, tonight. Because I'm driving back from Union right now. I had to go down and supervise down there. And they won the Union Tournament Championship. So, exciting for them. And, you know, I don't know if any of those folks will be listening. But uh, at least I got to mention that. But, Coach, thank you for coming on. Really appreciate it. Sorry I didn't get to see you in person. I've just got, like, the black space uh, – by my by my name there because I'm driving back from Union right now. It's shockingly, the cell service has been good. So kudos to AT and T, I guess. So, uh, but like thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, Coach. Absolutely, we'll have to get together, talk some ball, and maybe get you guys to our clinic, or maybe we come down and do some seven on seven sometime, or figure it out somehow, some way. But. JR, this would be about the point in the podcast where I say, hey, man, cue the music, because yeah. I'm Duke, he's Simmons, that's Coach Z. Watch out for North Point, the Grizzlies. They're, they're going to make a definite impact in their conference and statewide. You can see the energy. You can feel it. 
you know it's something special is going on there. Uh, for Mr. Moore, Mrs. Mr. Shellmeyer, Mr. Adams, good job, guys. Good job. Way to uh, way to way to make the right decision. So February fifth, we need to see you all in JCMO. Until then, we're out. See you later. <laughs>